All right, traders, hello. Happy weekend. It's Friday night. Uh, no, not Friday, Saturday night. Uh, just 10 past 11 or so. 1st of September. And may I say, wow, this year's gone pretty quickly. So let's get this nice little bar chart out here. So this is my PL for the year so far. So this has been live trading since January. And uh, as you can see, pretty nice the last two months. August definitely for trend trading for sort of my I wouldn't call it longer term but definitely not medium term type swings of um you know I sort of I hold average length of four days so it's uh it's been a little challenging and I've taken how many trades it's uh one two three four five six seven eight so eight trades and I was going through Every trade I take a screenshot of as well, and as you can see, that's here. So I've got out of the eight, I've, I've bought, I've got six here. So that's that's one there. I wouldn't call the Swiss here a losing trade though. So it's interesting how I've done that. That was a, <laughs> was a small. When I said, "Wow, that's a losing trade," so disregard that. That's been incorrectly cataloged. Um. So that's one, it's two, um, three. I was incorrectly reading that, guys. Sorry, that's the 8th of February. So that's one, it's two, three, and it's just three. Okay, so the, there must have been a few break -even. I'm gonna, just going to have to move this because I don't know why. Must have been on break even then, so it's all break even. So that represents uh, the situation that I felt with. So let me just get rid of that guy. So that's okay. I was, I was looking at this incorrectly. I was up very early this morning for work, so I apologize. I'm going to try and be as coherent as I can be. Um, I don't know why it lists the other one as like it did, and this is in like a different listing. But I'll um, I'll paste the Swiss yen in. Okay, so I can't, I've deleted it. That's what we're dealing with here. We're dealing with me being... Confident. <clears throat> me being confident restore. I'm going to be stoned. Alright, so for the winning trades, we had... So it's three losing trades. And then so one, two... Three August August August. So it's three three winning trades, three losing trades, and then two break even trades. I was gonna make sure I was CAD one. Did I try and sell those CAD twice? So one two it looks like. Okay. Interesting. That's strange. That might have been from last month. So I might have actually placed that trade uh, last month. Anyway, so let's have a look at the losing trades. So just in case you missed it, so that that's what I've done this month. So it's been pretty active. I was pretty tenacious. I, if anything looked like I wanted to break down, I was you know I was going to pursue it, and it was sort of I actually I had a target on the old dollar and it hit the target. It was like, um, it was 1.5 R. It was, you know, what I back tested. It was on a one hour that I took that and it, it's kept going. It's, uh, I was looking at it. Let's bring, well, I don't really want it, but I mean, with the one hour I do have to take profit and, uh, it just collapsed and that was great. That sort of helped me get slightly positive that Aussie dollar trade that I took. I took that on the 30th, very late on Thursday night. And it panned out pretty well. So I'm not going to go into much detail about the analytics because if you do follow my videos, you see I do post trade uh, reviews after every trade that I've taken and you know the outcome of it. So I've actually had eight positions. I thought it was ten, but it was eight. So um, I won't. This won't be a watch list video either. 
Um, I'm going to save that for tomorrow because there, there are quite a few things to talk about. September's going to pick up. It looks like there is US dollar strength too. So um, I see uh, September being pretty active. And look out for Connor, who features in uh, Trade Talk, Pippin and Easy, because uh, he's a pretty active trend trader. I think, you know, he's been uh, down a little bit, but there's, there's a lot of potential now. So, okay, so we're at 71, 80 odd. Um, and that's a support level right there. I wouldn't take that, but that, that was the trade that I took. So that panned out really well. I thought it was just going to go blah, but it didn't. It collapsed. And uh, it's looking. It's still, this is probably a resell. If we can get another breakdown, uh, potentially probably resell this, to be honest. Um, can't see why that I wouldn't. What's the next level? Man, the next level is 68. Wow. All right, that's significant, guys. That means there's a lot of room to go there. Respecting the trend line a little bit as well, it looks like. So you've got a few uh, things checked off on the on the list here for the setup. So uh, I really like that hourly setup. I won't. I wouldn't just take that straight into the level because it's a bit choppy. Um, you want to wait for it to break down again. This is like a last kiss. It's come breaking through. You know, contacted the zone a few times. Then we're gonna see breakdown again. So we'll watch that. Um, all right, let's let's see some of the losing trades. Some of the losing trades. Let's go. Delete that. I can delete that now, which is good. This is my OCD. Let's have a look at the euro pound bar trade. So I took two stabs at this and two losing trades on this. So uh, no regrets though. They're both one percent. So my normal 2%, but I've dimmed it down just because of the, you know, geopolitical tensions and whatnot. I am getting a new laptop soon as well. Uh, this one is struggling. Let's believe the process. I have a kitty on my lap as well. So, so little Mr. Aslambo Paz wants to be nice. Okay, so. Uh, oh, no, it was... It was very small size on the uh, euro pound. Oh, that's a new video, buddy. Okay, so it wasn't by trade. It must have been. I'm just trying to understand. Oh, okay, sorry. So I got in there, and it it did fade out a little bit. So I had a pretty tight stop. This might have been taken on one hour, but what I did look for on the euro pound as my thesis was uh, it's just being very needy being very needy yes. alright so as you can see this especially was a nice little bracket that's why I attempted it again he wasn't so good um, obviously I didn't take it on the weekly candle but it was really breaking out pretty strong on the daily you can go back yeah so earlier in August, and then I was like, okay, I'll cop that. And then it was looking pretty nice again. Would have taken some four hour. And then there was some news out of um, Britain about the soft Brexit, you know, being a big possibility. And that really turned on me pretty aggressively. So, <laughs> you know, you cop that. You really have to. That's why the stop's there. It's there for a reason. The trade is not working out. And as you can see, it's sort of, it didn't, it really just kept falling. So, all right, that's why I'm doing the video, there, buddy. If you don't pat him, he's going to cry. He'll be like, man, oh, you don't love me. You don't love me. Let me just clear that as well. I don't know if the mic's going to pick up the uh, parent. Black cat as well, so for people who are superstitious, probably don't watch the video because apparently they've been Brad Luck. So that's the Euro Pound summed up pretty well. Um, that was. Let me bring up the USDN here. This would have been taken in July, and I was watching some SMB. Go and check these guys out on YouTube and you're in equities. I strongly recommend it. Alright, so daily, 
I have screenshotted the trade here on the daily, but I would have probably taken it on a four hour setup. Um, nice candle, nice candle. In the context, though, a little choppy. Not really a clean break, but pretty significant candle. And uh, I got stopped out there. As you can see, the, the, that might have been taken on a one hour because where the stop loss would have been at the, probably the 20 day moving average. So, um, and now the USDN, I mean, just looking at it, it's interesting. Uh, it's not super strong. Like on the f yesterday, it was interesting to see how the US dollar did react against the majors. And the yen was by far the, the most resilient. So, um, you know, one to watch potentially. Yeah, so it was a breakout. It was a it was a Bloomin attempted, you know, sideways for a little bit. Nice nice candle though, but in the context not really. This is sort of offered some resistance as well. It's unfortunate. Okay, so those are the trades that now did I take it? Oh no, I I took it in August. Yeah, I, I did take it in August. So it was over very fast as well. Um do I have time to go to the winning trades? I don't nearly have time. Um, you know, I sold the Aussie dollar, which I've, I've been over just before. Uh, Swiss yen was, was pretty good. I closed that out as well. And it looked like it was reversing, and it sort of did. Uh, New Zealand dollar. That wasn't too bad. Again, everything was, was okay earlier in the month with the US dollar. And then Donald was talking about um, you know, what Powell was doing, and he wasn't really happy, and that really caused a bit of a swing. So, you know, <laughs> it was looking good. But August is like that. I mean, you're not going to have heaps of people piling in in the market because they're enjoying their holidays and whatnot. So that, you know, you can't have it all the time. You, haven't, you can't have great trends happening all the time. So I'm going to finish that there, guys. Watchlist will be out tomorrow, but that is how I finish the month. So 0.2% up. Uh, you know, it's not holiday time in, in Australia. It's winter time. So I was actively trading and I tried my very best, but those are the trades. A pretty diversified range of um, positions. And uh, that's it, guys. Thanks for watching and bye for now.